In the winter of 2006, the Northwest was hit by the worst windstorm in decades. This storm knocked out power to more than 1.5 million homes. That's one out of every two homes and businesses. Tragically, 14 people died and area emergency rooms were inundated with over 100 people suffering from carbon monoxide poisoning, many of them needing to be treated in local hospitals with hyperbaric chambers. The cause of the carbon monoxide poisoning was found to be people improperly using a charcoal grill indoors for cooking and heating, running a generator indoors, or running a vehicle in a closed garage. The normal use of propane and natural gas appliances or kerosene heaters does not cause carbon monoxide poisoning with proper ventilation. But in poorly ventilated or enclosed spaces, carbon monoxide can build to dangerous levels, causing poisoning when the fumes are inhaled. It is never safe to use a charcoal grill hibachi inside the home. This was the major cause of deaths during the 2006 windstorm. How carbon monoxide enters the red blood cells. To understand why carbon monoxide is so dangerous, let's first look at how it enters our bloodstream. The purpose of the red blood cells is to carry oxygen throughout our body, most importantly to our heart, lungs, and brain. When carbon monoxide enters our body, it easily attaches itself to the red blood cells. These cells then carry the carbon monoxide throughout our blood, poisoning our heart, lungs, and brain. As the level of carbon monoxide increases, the amount of oxygen in our blood is reduced. This can lead to illness or death. Why is carbon monoxide so dangerous? This gas has no color, taste, or odor to it, so it's very difficult to realize when you're breathing it in. The effects of carbon monoxide poisoning. The effects of carbon monoxide can be variable. They can be mild, like dizziness, nausea, vomiting. They can be severe, um, as in coma, unconsciousness, or even death. The role of a hyperbaric chamber. Treatment in a hyperbaric oxygen chamber is critical to severe cases of carbon monoxide poisoning. It removes the carbon monoxide molecule from the red blood cells rapidly and eliminates the toxic effects. What to do if carbon monoxide poisoning is suspected? If you suspect carbon monoxide poisoning, get out into the fresh air immediately. Do not stop to gather belongings or pack clothes. Simply get everyone together and get out into the fresh air. Do not leave your door open. Always close the door behind you. The fire department can then test and detect for a possible leak. If you or your loved ones are experiencing the symptoms of carbon monoxide poisoning, contact your doctor immediately or go directly to the hospital and get yourself and your loved ones checked for possible carbon monoxide poisoning. If you have pets, you can have them seen by a veterinarian for advice and treatment. Safety tips to prevent carbon monoxide poisoning. Generators should be operated in well-ventilated locations outdoors, at least three feet away from all doors, windows, vent openings, and combustibles. Install carbon monoxide alarms inside your home to provide early warning of the buildup of this deadly gas. Look for the Underwriters Laboratories or UL certification when buying an alarm. Read the manufacturer's recommendations for the proper placement of the carbon monoxide alarm. Call your local fire department's non-emergency number to find out what number to call if the carbon monoxide alarm sounds. Post that number by your telephone. Make sure everyone in the household knows the difference between the fire emergency and carbon monoxide emergency numbers, if there is a difference. Test carbon monoxide alarms at least once a month and replace the batteries according to the manufacturer's instructions. A carbon monoxide alarm is not a substitute for a smoke alarm. 
use both a carbon monoxide alarm and a smoke alarm. Remember, you cannot see or smell carbon monoxide, but it can be deadly. Follow these simple steps to protect yourself and your loved ones from this silent killer.